right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, still in our heat wave here. And, but today I'm joined by Jeff Chastain, who is north of Dallas, Texas, probably even hotter there right now, I'm sure. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're joining you with the heat wave right now. It's 100 plus. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, living in San Diego, you get, you get kind of spoiled. And if the weather isn't like 100% perfect, like just the right amount of heat and everything, you start to get a feeling so sorry for yourself. This is August as usual for us, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> exactly. And Jeff is a creator, problem solver, and professional EOS implementer. Okay, and this is what I wanted to ask you first before we get into our subject: is EOS or your entrepreneurial operating or entrepreneur operating system? So tell me a little bit about that and and what that means and how you came up with that. Well, EOS is is actually beyond me. It's it's a it's a much bigger system kind of a thing. It was written by Gino or created by Gino Whitman a number of years ago, but it's really just a a series of basic business practices, tools, processes, etc. that are assembled together really with the entrepreneur in mind in their in my their mind because it's if you look at most entrepreneurs, they've got an idea, they've got a vision, something of some product, some service they want to bring out. Hopefully it comes out with mm -hmm. uh, some traction behind it. But what most of the time they don't have is an MBA background. They don't necessarily right. know how do I build, how do I scale a business? I just got an idea I want to do something with kind of a thing here. And that's kind of where EOS comes in is it comes back in and, and really builds that foundation underneath their idea, underneath their concept to say, okay, this is now how we take your idea, your one person, your two or three people here working with you, your core team, and actually treat this like a business, grow it, scale it, things like that. Yeah, because I mean, with with a lot of uh, a lot of people, you know, as you say, I mean, want to start a business and all of that, and it sounds great, and they have a great idea, but then when they try to go and do it, they realize that they don't really know how to bring it to fruition, and what are all the different moving parts that they need to pay attention to. It really is. Yeah. And that's exactly where this fits in. It just, it helps from an entrepreneurial standpoint. It just, like I said, without, you're not an expert in everything. You're not an expert in how to necessarily build a business, how to grow a business. And that's really where this is just from a simplistic standpoint. It's not meant to be a full MBA. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial pieces you need to grow that business. Well, somebody told me once of a friend of his who had two uh, very successful business person, he had two things on his wall. One was his Harvard MBA and the other one was his first filing for bankruptcy. And he said from his, one of his first businesses and he said he learned more from the second than he did from the first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about, okay, so if you're an entrepreneur, maybe you have a small team around you, how do you get everybody on the same page, a collective vision, motivated and all heading in the right direction? Well, that's really one of the, the keys, one of the biggest first points out of EOS is looking at that vision because a lot of times you'll start out again, the entrepreneur's got his idea, maybe his little core team or her little core team right there. But once you start bringing in people, bringing in additions to try to scale that out, you tend to lose that focus because a lot of times you don't necessarily communicate it well or it's not communicated well. Those people are looking at things and saying, okay, I know different ways to bring things. So you get stuck with marketing and sales being on different pages, mm -hmm. operations left, trying to clean up the mess and everything as to what marketing and sales kind of sold. So it really comes back to that vision to say, because a lot of people look at vision and say, well, that's my mission statement or that's, that's my whatever up on the about us page of my website that I wrote four mm -hmm. or five years ago. And honestly, nobody's looked at since kind of a thing. And vision really goes a lot further than that, that it actually goes to define exactly who you are as a company. So yes, your, your mission statement, but also looking at things like, okay, what are our values? What's our, what's our, our personality as a company and making sure that all of your people follow those core values. It also should define, okay, who are we trying to reach? What are we trying to do here? Mm -hmm. So exactly who's our, our target market? Exactly what value are we bringing to them? What's our differentiators? What, what are, how are we different in what we're trying to bring? So that way that same message gets conveyed through marketing and sales that they know, okay, this is who I'm supposed to go target. This is who I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to message to them. And then it really needs to include your, your planning to some degree that is, okay, what's your, your big goal here is, to, okay, where are we going to be in the next seven to 10 years as a company? 
hopefully getting everybody in the company excited about that to say, okay, yes, this is my vision. This is what we're going to work towards as a company rather than this just being a nine to five job that I come punch a, a time clock for kind of a thing. And when you can put all that together, get everybody bought into that, everybody excited about that, then it's not just this idea in the visionary's head. It's, it's the system that everybody's pulling towards. Everybody's moving this and we can actually gain traction with the company at that point rather than, Many times the visionaries just kind of feel like, okay, I've scaled it out and all of a sudden nothing works. It's, it's just stuck in the mud. We, we can't move anywhere. What happened? Yeah. And obviously, as you say, I mean, when that happens, uh, a lot of the times it is precisely because the visionary has it in their head and hasn't been able to put it into a practical, coherent kind of destination for people. Because I think if you if you point out the destination, if you if you are very clear in what the destination is, I think people will understand what they need to do to get there, or they will figure out how to get there. But if you haven't really painted a, a proper picture of the destination, it's a hard thing for people. Like if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, right? Oh yeah, yeah, and you have no idea whether you're really going to get there or not. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that's probably one of the hardest things for a lot of entrepreneurs is to really give life to their vision in a tangible way that other people can understand. And as you said earlier, that uh, the way marketing need what marketing needs to know or what sales needs to know, what operations needs to know, they're all nuanced versions of the same vision. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you don't have them on the same page, then you've got marketing sending one message, you got sales mm -hmm even different sales reps kind of a thing, selling different things and operations is left saying, okay, I thought we were building blue widgets and you just went out and sold a red widget and now what do we do kind of a thing. And then of course, then that just leads to customer service issues and complaints on the back end. So it's just a, it, it all rolls downhill at that point. So how can the, how could the entrepreneur ensure that they are actually the glue keeping everything together, that they're the ones like making sure everybody stays on track, that everybody understands you know, has what they need to know and understands the vision from their perspective. I mean, how do they do that? Because let's face it, with with most entrepreneurs, they tend to, you know, gravitate to one area or another, wherever their particular skill sets lie. I mean, if they're a great salesperson, they're going to be heavily involved in sales. If they're the innovator, product innovator, they're going to be over with product. Or if, if they're a very operational person, they're going to be deep in operations. How do they ensure that they are keeping all the different pieces working properly together? Uh, it really depends first upon on, on themselves right there that, okay, do you want it to this to be successful? Do you want this to grow out and scale? Because if you do, honestly, at some point, you got to learn to be able to take the hats off that, that you got to mm -hmm. say, okay, yes, I know I can, because on in day one, you've got to wear every single hat kind of a thing. That's, that's yeah, everything sure. for the company. But if you really want it to scale, you've got to get to the point where it's say, like, okay, I can take the sales hat off, hand it over here to Mary. She's going to run sales now. And I don't have to be in her back pocket sitting next to her kind of a thing in the cube watching everything she does or correcting it and it's one of those things that really comes down it's it sounds counterintuitive almost that it's mm -hmm. in order to get you more flexibility more fun really in your business you've got to add structure you've got to add process to it so that i know if mary over here is running sales and i've got a dashboard here that says okay in order to call this a successful week a successful month whatever with sales these three numbers or these four numbers have got to be met. And I can look at that as the visionary, as the CEO and say, okay, yes, all four numbers are green. I don't have to bug Mary. I don't have to sit next to her and say, okay, Mary, why are you not making these calls or why are your people not working or whatever? I can step back and that needs to happen really across the board. If, if sales or operations or whatever is still your forte, great, you can be in there, but you've got to be able to realize and have, potentially somebody holds you accountable to say, okay, you're the bottleneck right now in your mm -hmm. company. Yes, you, I know you love sales. I know you want to be in there. Okay, it's time for you to back out and be the visionary and handle the big relationships. Let your team handle the day-to-day -day sales operations kind of a thing because that's, to me, that's one of the hardest and it, it's one of the hardest things for me as well is being able to step back and trust mm -hmm. your people that something else that can be done maybe or maybe not better, but at least more efficiently than you can do it. And then that's yeah. really where the processes and stuff come into play is to say, okay, it's being done the same way, the right way every time. And I've got these metrics that I can trust that without having to insert myself into that process. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a couple of things in there. Number one, you you, uh, you touched on the idea of process. And I do think this is something that a, a lot of people misunderstand, as you said, is they think process is somehow restrictive when, in fact, process is the thing that can bring efficiency and give you more flexibility to do high value things. Um, so it's actually the complete opposite. Process is your friend when done right. Yes, process gone wild, not so good. But process done correctly, it can be your your great friend. And and the other thing you just touched on there is, I mean, that's one of the hardest things for people. Sometimes when you do let somebody do something, yeah, as long as the result is there, you have to let them do it in their way. And their way may not be the way that you would have done it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's def differing degrees of that to say, okay, mm -hmm. again, going back to process, here is Acme Solutions way of doing things. But when we look at process, and I find that's a lot of what paralyzes people when you say, okay, go sure. document your processes, is they're thinking of some six inch thick SOP kind of manual. You really need just the high level, give me the, the, the top 20% here that'll give me 80% of the value. And if Mary has a different way of getting the rest of those details and we still get the top 80% of the value, then okay, mm -hmm. go for it. You need to, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act between yes, you need structure, yes, you need process, without overburdening and basically killing the creativity of your team. And that's really where you start hitting the major corporations is they've got everything so built up, so standardized, all the infrastructure. It's like, okay, you're just a robot at that point. So you gotta, gotta mm -hmm. walk that fine line in between. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, a process should you know help you do things faster, better. And if they don't, then the process isn't worthwhile. Yeah. And you've got to have them accessible enough that your team can can get, uh, jump on board with it. You want mm -hmm. somebody to be able to step into that role and say, okay, day one, I can be productive. I don't have to go spend the next three months reading all the documentation, understand what I'm even supposed to do in my job. Yeah, and I think the, the, the great advantage, obviously, that um, smaller, nimble entrepreneurial organizations have as well is that your process doesn't need to be a millstone because it can be dynamic. It can be something that you change, that you improve on the fly even. Uh, uh, because you because you need to whereas in big corporations you know it becomes very easy to live with inefficient or cumbersome processes because it's just too difficult to get them changed yeah and that's really where eos shines that it's it's all built around simplicity mm -hmm. that it's processes for us are even one two page documents just right. real quick something again it's not some big manual even the whole vision planning we do it on two pages kind of a thing it's not mm -hmm. something i've worked with branding coaches and stuff before that want to build this whole document mm -hmm. on all your color schemes and everything. So everything goes yeah. into your brand. It's like, no, I just, just need something quick and simple right now. You don't need to be that in depth for, for an entrepreneurial small kind of organization. Yeah. And I think that's a, and I think that's a trend too, because if you look at uh, the way things are developing too, and with, you know, technology and, and all these um, SaaS tools and that that are available to you now as an organization is you can move a lot quicker. Plus, you don't need so many of these experts anymore because there's a lot of things you can you can be very self-sufficient in doing. And that's why I think it's a it's a wonderful time for uh, nimble entrepreneurial uh, companies and people because they they can be ex way more self-sufficient than they ever uh, could be before. Yeah, it really is. And it's, I, I'm, my background is actually in technology. I've done, mm -hmm. I actually launched my own SAS uh, or software as a service platform a number of years back kind of a thing. And I'd, I'm a firm believer in technology. What actually got me to make the shift over into the, the strategic business coaching instead was because I saw too many of these companies trying to rely solely on technology. Sure. And okay, I'm going to go get the CRM system and it's going to automatically increase my sales. It's like, no, you've got to have <laughs> A sales process that you can plug into the CRM system and then yes it'll help you be more efficient but without that underlying foundation you can throw technology at it all day long and you'll turn around and blame the technology and say it was the technology's yeah. fault we didn't increase sales 200 percent this year it's like <laughs> you don't know how to sell in the first place is the problem yeah yeah no exactly I mean that is the that is the problem sometimes it's like yeah you say you have a you have a, a, a poor sales process or something. And then if you, you know, get a CRM and you implement that sales process, now you just have a more efficiently implemented poor sales poor process. Sales process. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like my favorite was always when people would say, we have a communication problem. So we're putting in a new communication tool and you go, okay, so we're just going to communicate badly using the tool now. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More efficiently, yeah, that's not, like, yeah. Exactly. So what are some other areas that the EOS can help, uh, on, you know, nimble entrepreneurial organizations, especially now, say, as we start to emerge from this, uh, you know, strange pandemic world that we've been living in? Um, how can they use as an advantage, maybe to their advantage when competing with larger organizations? Well, it's really the whole idea around EOS is, is just, again, building that infrastructure, building that simplicity in the organization. So on one hand today, it helps in that, okay, we're streamlining processes, we're being more efficient, we're being mm -hmm. more productive with a, a smaller set of resources that we've got. But at the same time, tomorrow, whenever it is down the road, when this starts lifting up, the economy starts lifting back up. Now you're that much more well positioned to say, okay, we're already built right we've already got the efficiencies to where now we can turn around and sit here and just scale it up and everything's going to keep working that way that that's anytime you go back to the even the 2008 recession a lot of times mm -hmm. the companies that came out of that were the ones that were sitting there innovating trying to grow during that time they didn't wait until okay now revenues are coming back in now cash flow is good afterwards now let's build they've got that infrastructure this is in a lot of ways it's i look at it and talk to companies like okay if you've got the resources, so obviously there's people out there that just flat out don't have the resources, but if you've got mm -hmm. the resources, right now when things are slow, that's the time to go fix the infrastructure. That's the time to go fix the process, not waiting a year down the nap from now or even a year ago when everybody's just see, pants on fire kind of thing, flying as fast as you can. Now let's try to fix the infrastructure underneath. It's like in a lot of ways, this is an opportunity or can be an opportunity oh, yeah. for many people right now to say, okay, this is the time to innovate here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was at that old saying, there's uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago and the second best time is today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Listen, thanks very much, uh, Jeff, for joining us today. All of Jeff's information will be in his contributor bio. Uh, but before we go, Jeff, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, like I said, I'm a strategic coach, EOS implementer. So I work with entrepreneurial business leaders like we're talking here really to implement that, that EOS system, really to gain clarity in their business kind of a thing and really help build that efficiencies and move forward. So I've got uh, resources about EOS, actually the two books, Traction and Get a Grip. I've got free chapters up on my website. And then just any questions or anything, just send me an email, just ask at admentus.com and I'm always, always be able to help. Yeah, and I, and I think it's great because I do think that that's unfortunately where some uh, entrepreneurs and small business uh, uh, kind of stumble at the beginnings is because they, you know, they go in with the enthusiasm and the ideas, but the structure isn't there. And by the time they figure out what they needed from a structure point of view, maybe they burn through their cash. They burn through it or honestly, a lot of them just simply don't know that it's like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I hired on this new person. Why are they not working out? And it's well... Unfortunately, it's because you didn't have the system or the infrastructure in place for them mm -hmm. to succeed in the first place. So they're, they kind of flounder at that point. It's, it's unfortunate. And that's really where I get my, my why and my passion is saying, okay, let's, let's rekindle that. Let's, let's put, some, put this back together here, put some of that foundation in place so that you can turn around and run with it and enjoy it again. You can, if, well, if you want to go play golf on Fridays, we can set that up. We, we can <laughs> get you that, that system working where you don't have to be down in the weeds every single day trying to fight fires. Uh, perfect. That's great. Um, I love it. And so I would really, really encourage any of you entrepreneurs or small businesses out there, check out Jeff's uh, resources and maybe have a chat with Jeff. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.